This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids, reviewing a recent exam. Right now we have an unsymmetrical bending problem, which is could also be called bending about two axes. We have the basic formula of bending, which is normal stress, sigma, is equal to my over i. Where m is the moment about the axis, y is the distance from that neutral axis, and i is the moment of inertia about that axis. So in this case, we have an x and or a, well, actually a y and a z axes, and we have bending about of both axes. So you can kind of think th think about this as a problem two problems in one and you combine them. We have bending about this axis which is the z-axis which is something like that. Some moment about that and that's the mz. The z-axis in that case is the neutral axis. Plus we have bending about the other axis which is the vertical axis or the y-axis in this case. And turns out that we have bending about this axis like this. And that is my, because that's the y-axis, which also now becomes the neutral axis for that bending. And we have my. So, that's how we're going to do. We're going to break it up into two parts. Look at where we have compression and tension and solve it that way. Okay, so first we look at the moment. The moment is, in this case, 5,500 Newton meters at 25 degrees from the z-axis. That's going to make the z moment the cosine of 25. It's gonna, remember, this moment is a rotational vector. It's mz is in that direction only because that's the axis of rotation. We use the right hand rule to determine the direction of rotation. Point our thumb in the direction of the vector and that's the direction of rotation. Calculate the number. It's adjacent to that 25 degree angle so it's the cosine. So it's 5500 cosine 25 which equals 49.85 Newton meters. For the y-axis, it's just the y-axis, comp the y component of that single moment that we have, 5500, it's the opposite. So my is the sine of, of 25 times 5500. And so that works out to be 23.24 Newton meters. Okay, so we've divided our moment into its two component parts. Now let's figure our moments of inertia because we're going to need that. And we're going to need the moment about the z, moment of inertia about the z-axis, which it's a simple rectangle, so we use bh cubed over 12. So, iz is bh cubed over 12. It's 120 wide, 240 tall. We cube that and divide by 12, and we get 138.2 10 to the 6th millimeters to the fourth. I can do the same thing with IY and you can either look at it as uh, B cubed H over 12 or I just kind of turn my head. Anyway, I get that the base in that case is 240. The height 120 cubit 
divided by 12 and I get 34.56 10 to the 6th millimeters to the 4th. Now I need to look at where are my moment, where each one of these moments is causing compression or tension. Okay, I forgot to draw the uh, direction of the the Y moment, MY. Once again, I use the right hand rule. I point my thumb up like this MY vector, and that gives me rotation like this. Okay, so that's the direction that I've drawn it on these two separate drawings. MZ causes compression on the bottom, so I have negative sigma Z down here, and it's pulling away from the top, so I have positive sigma Z on the top. MY is creating compression on the right side, so I have negative sigma Y over here, and I have positive sigma y over here. So now I'm really set up to uh, sort of base this, divide it into two problems and I've got quadrants of stress. Let me transfer that information to this drawing here. On the top of the section I have positive sigma z Below the neutral axis, the z-neutral axis, I have negative sigma z. To the left of the neutral axis, I have positive sigma y. To the right, I have negative sigma y. Now I just need to plug into my formula the distances from the neutral axis for each one of these cases. So first I'm asked for the normal bending stress, which of course is sigma, at point D. So D is this up in the upper right hand corner. And I have different dist distances from the neutral axis. Let me draw it on these little drawings here. There's point D in both of those cases. So for MZ, I care about this distance from the neutral axis. That Y distance, or as I call it, just the Y number and that's half of the height. That's 120. For MY, I care about that distance from the Y neutral axis, which is half of 120 or 60. So I plug it into the formulas. So I say at point D, I have sigma Z is M, which is 49.85. And that is in Newton meters, and I like to work in millimeters, so I'm going to multiply by a thousand. Then for the Z axis bending, that distance Y is, as I said, half of its height, 120. And I'm using IZ, which is 138.2, 10 to the 6th. So that works out to be 4.327 megapascals. I'll assign the uh, positive and negative here in a second. So sigma Y is the Y moment of 2324 times a thousand to get my units. Let's go back and look at my units here in a second. The Y distance is the distance from the Y neutral axis, so that's half of its width. Its width is 120, so that distance is 60. And IY is 34.56, 10 to the 6. That works out to be 4.035 megapascals. 
check my units up here I have Newton meters times a thousand millimeters per new per meter and I have millimeters 120 on the bottom I have millimeters to the fourth so I've got Newton millimeters squared on the top which cancels out two of the millimeters to the fourth so I get Newton per millimeter squared which is a megapascal okay so let's look at the plus and minus I've got the numbers at point D I've got looking at the quadrants I've got negative sigma y and positive sigma z so what I've got is negative sigma y negative 4.035 and positive sigma z because it's above the neutral above the z neutral axis 4.327 which gives me 0.292 uh, megapascals which is equal to 292 kilopascals. That's answer B. At point F, I also want to know the bending stress in question 5. And I observe that it lies on the Y neutral axis. Point F is what I'm talking about here. So it lies right on the neutral axis for Y. And it's right up here same location relative to the Z neutral axis as D was. So all I have at Y is, I mean at F, is uh, positive sigma Z. So that's just positive 4.327 megapascals. That was answer B. Question six, I'm asked, for the rectangular beam shown, determine the maximum bending stress. Well, that's going to be either positive or negative, where I have both added up. Both positive sigma x, and, I mean sigma z and sigma y, or negative sigma z and sigma y. So I can look at the quadrants, and I can say, well, I have positives there at that upper left-hand corner. So that's positive max. Down here, I have both negatives, so I have negative max. Either case, the number is added up. Both of these numbers that I got for sigma for the stress at D, except they both add. So I've got max is sigma is equal to four point three two seven positive sigma z plus positive sigma y, 035 and I get 8.36 megapascals that's the answer to that one and question 7 says for the rectangular beam shown determine the minimum bending stress well the minimum you can't have less than zero stress you can have negative which is compression but that's more stress than uh, zero. So this is to point up the existence of a neutral axis. And we can figure it, and we had some homework problems on this where we figure where the neutral axis is. But either way, it's going to be somewhere there near the middle of the section where the neutral axes coincide. And so therefore the minimum bending stress is zero.